Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Oasis Church. We are glad that you are here today. I hope you are glad to be here as well. Let's go ahead and stand up together. And this morning, I encourage you as we lift up our God through song this morning, that you would sing, raise your hands, raise your voice, and uh, let's just enjoy praising him together as a community of believers today. for us, 
who can be against us. So this morning, I encourage you just to lift him up today because uh, he is worthy. He stands alone. Turn into wine and open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Come on, sing it out together. Our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine, and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Come on, sing our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is here. Power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power. you are on our side, that you are fighting for us, and if you are for us, who can be against us? Come on, let's sing it out together, church. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? have a seat just for a moment. I 
And we're going to take communion together today, just like we do every week here at Oasis Church. And if you didn't get a chance on your way in to grab those communion elements out on the table, uh, we have tables set up on each corner of the room. You'll see them there. Feel free to get up at any time, grab some of those elements there. Um, uh, you know, if you're watching online too, don't want to forget you guys. Uh, you can feel free to get up, go to your kitchen, grab a cup of juice, a piece of bread. Uh, but today, as we join together, we do uh, just what Jesus asked of us in the Bible. When he was with his disciples um, in, in, in the upper room, in the Passover meal, he said this, he broke the bread and he handed it out to his disciples. He said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And it also says in the same way he took the cup and gave it to his disciples. He said, this is my blood, which we poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And that's why we do this every week here at Oasis. As often as we do this, to be reminded of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And you see, where there was sin, the penalty for sin was death. So we see all throughout the Old Testament that where there was sin, things had to die. And that's why they had sacrifices. That's why they make sacrifices to God. But Jesus said, no more. I will come and I will die as the ultimate sacrifice once and for all. And that's what Jesus did for you and for me. He stepped in and he died in place of our sin. The Bible says that he became sin for us so that today we can walk in new life in him. We don't have to be held down by our shame or our past sins. You know, the Bible says that as far as the East is from the West, so are your sins from you. So today you don't have to walk in the shame of, of your past anymore. We have been set free in the name of Jesus by what he did for us on the cross. So today we can rejoice in that. Well, let's bow our heads and close our eyes today and pray. God, today we thank you for giving us new life in you. God, where we don't deserve it, we didn't earn it, but God, you chose to give us your grace and your mercy. And you continue to do that each and every day. If we would just look to you, trust in you, believe in you, know that you are God. And today we declare that today. So Father, we just ask that you would help us to live out our faith each and every day. We don't want our faith to be a Sunday faith, but we want our faith to be a life song to you. So God, would you just help us as we're at our workplaces, at our schools, uh, with our families, wherever we may find ourselves. God, that we would continually look to you and live out our faith and walk out our faith. You truly are a good God. And we thank you for going to the cross for us and giving us new life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this morning, uh, we're going to uh, continue just to sing, and you can take those elements whenever you're ready. And I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender Dead or not in tell me that you're pleased in that I'm never alone Cause you're a good, good father to you you know just what we need before 
today, close our eyes. This morning, I, I just want you to know that you are loved by the creator of the universe, the one who made everything that we see, that he loves you. And that's why he sent his son here to this earth to die on a cross. He did it for you because he has a plan. He has a purpose for you. You are not here by accident. You're not here in Pueblo West by accident. Even if maybe you didn't intentionally plan on being here. But God has you here so that he can use you. So that you can be an ambassador of the God most high. You see, God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. It just takes us to believe that and to know and understand that we are loved by him. Yes, God, this morning we believe in you. We believe in God the Father and Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit. And today we just, we ask that you'd help us walk in our faith that even when we cannot see, that we would believe. And even when we cannot feel you around us, God, we believe that you are here. Thank you for being so good to us. Come on, church, let's sing this out one more time. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am, yes, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Well, God, again, we just thank you for giving us your grace and mercy and showing us your love that you proved to us on the cross. And it's in Jesus' name we all pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. We can have a seat today.
anybody ready to hear the word of the Lord today? Woo! Welcome to all of you in the house, all of you watching online. Hey, guess what? We're going to have the 4th of July this year. The Red, White, and Boom, our biggest outreach of the year. We'd love for you guys to get connected. Uh, it's on a Sunday, so we're gonna. what we're asking people to do is if you'd sign up for an hour, hour and a half or whatever, come and enjoy, but also serve. And uh, last year we did not have this, so we're hoping that it's uh, really packed and crowded this year. So awesome. So you can register and do that online. And we want to make sure that you're getting connected. Uh, th we have two more installments of our Financial Peace University here in the house at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. We also have two more ladies Bible studies Saturday at 9 a.m. You can also check that out on Zoom, ladies. Our Oasis portal, if you've not gone online and, and filled out your information, we'd love for you to do that, upload some pictures and uh, be able to do that. Take it. We do not sell any information, it's just for us here. And it's to help you get connected if you don't receive, like for example, our weekly e-news, that is a helpful way to stay connected. Father's Day, we're having a cookout next week after the third service. Guys, if you got a grill that you can bring, uh, we're gonna have, the church gonna supply the meats, uh, also bring a lawn chair. I've been told to announce that. Uh, so we need a setup, cleanup crew, side dishes, and you can actually physically register for that on your way out at Connecting Point. And I hope to have a good turnout for that. And uh, then our 4th of July outreach. Uh, now is a time in our worship service where we worship through giving. And as we prepare our hearts to give today, uh, we have a video prepared for you. So take a look around. What do you have that God hasn't given you? Every heartbeat, every breath, every good and perfect gift comes from Him. He is the ultimate giver. He literally gives us gifts that we can't comprehend. Think about this. There are more electrical impulses generated in one day by a single human brain cell than by all the telephones in the world. <laughs> or how about the fact that food tastes delicious? It didn't have to taste delicious. It could have all tasted like kale, but no, it's fantastic. We plan our day around good tasting food. God gave us this. And then there's our health. We're not healthy because we deserve it. We didn't jump in a 55 gallon drum of yogurt and spinach. Our health is a gift, a gift that is too often taken for granted. God has always given to me knowing that he would get little in return. He is a father that enjoys giving good gifts to his children. I've heard it said that it's possible to give without loving, but you can never love without giving. And that is his example. For God so loved the world that he gave. Like most people, I'm often driven by what I don't have when I should be driven to seek the heart of God. Because God's heart is revealed in his generosity. Maybe my heart is too. He is a good, good father. As you prepare your hearts to give today, would you pray with me? Father, we thank you that you are a good, good father, that you've given to us the abundant life, you call it. We thank you for Jesus and you giving Jesus and explaining to us the way, the truth, and the life and how our hearts are just gets to pour out in generosity to you in thanksgiving because you have first supplied us and that we will be found faithful in giving back to you. Thank you for generous hearts. Thank you for caring hearts. Thank you for hearts that love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. You're joining us in part five of this message series. We're looking at the Old Testament book of Daniel. Daniel lived in a culture uh, where he survived and thrived in a culture that was really hostile toward his beliefs. And we'll get into that in just a moment. And what we're trying to convey throughout this series is that as a Christ follower, that we can stand courageous no matter what the world throws at you, that you can stand strong in your faith, even though the culture that we live in does not appreciate our values or beliefs at oftentimes. And uh, we've been springboarding off a verse of scripture that you just might choose to memorize from Joshua chapter one and verse nine. Let's read this out loud together. The Bible says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. 
for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He is with you wherever you go. And I pray this message today as we dive into it will give somebody hope today that God's going to speak directly to you about something that you've been praying for for a very long time. That's why I've entitled today's message, When You Need Your Faith Strengthened. Because there are some people, and you've been believing and praying, and you still haven't seen any results. People who've been praying for their children or their friends to come to faith in Christ. For those who are praying for some type of breakthrough, maybe it is uh, uh, to overcome depression or an addiction or a financial breakthrough or relational breakthrough. Maybe some of you have been praying for your parents because their marriage is on the rocks and you don't want them to get a divorce. Or you're praying for your own marriage or praying for physical healings. God, heal me of this cancer. God, heal my friend of this disease, whatever it is. You've been believing for a long time in something significant, but you've still not seen the results. And I believe that God is gonna to minister to you today in a very, very special way from Daniel chapter 10 as we look into this text. So let's kind of get up to speed to where we are in, in Daniel chapter 10. We looked last week at Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel was like 80 years old. Today, he's about 85 years old. He's an old man and literally for decades, he has been praying, living in faith, praying that God would do some miracle. And if you remember last, in, in the first message, we talked about how King Nebuchadnezzar went to Jerusalem and decimated it, destroyed the temple, took a bunch of people as POWs uh, back to Babylon. And Daniel's been praying for decades that God would restore the temple, that, that God would bring back his people from Babylon and, and take them back to Jerusalem. He's been praying for this. And there were some signs that this might happen, but all of a sudden he receives this vision from God uh, of more war, more hardships. And he's like, I've been praying for decades and now I see more hard times coming. So Daniel did what he always did. What did Daniel always do? He always went to God in prayer. And the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 10 that Daniel prayed for 21 days. For 21 days, he prayed and fasted. Now, if you're newer to our church, just to let you know every year at the beginning of the year, we pray for 21 days. We fast and we pray as a church. There's nothing like it. We look forward to it every year. But the Bible tells us here in chapter 10 that Daniel, while he fasted and prayed, he used no fragrant lotions, which meant he didn't take a bath. And I just want you to know that during our 21 day fast, we take baths during our fast, just to let you know that. But he sought God. And at the end of this 21 day period, he received a vision from an angelic being. And as we read about this in Daniel 10, let me just tell you, we're not exactly sure what this angelic being exactly is. Many believe it's the pre-incarnate Christ. In fact, we have an image of this from the artist rendering. That's Daniel as an old man. This is a, 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 a Christophany or a, a theophany, a, an image of Christ. Some people believe this is what Daniel is addressing in chapter 10 where before Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that he existed before the creation of the world, that God is a triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and that we see in times in the Old Testament where Christ appears, this Christophany, and many believe that this is indeed what's going on right here. So next time you're at a Bible study, you can impress your friends by going, oh, this is a Christophany in the Old Testament, a big theological word, right? So Daniel's vision is likely a Christophany. And uh, so when we're in doubt and you're in church, it's everything's Jesus, right? Like the little boy who was in the Sunday school class and the Sunday school teacher said, hey, what's brown and has a fluffy tail and runs up trees and eats nuts. And the little boy said, uh, Jesus, and she goes, no, it's a squirrel. And he said, well, it sounded like a squirrel, but I'm in Sunday school class. So I, might, I, th I thought I might as well go with Jesus, right? So we don't know exactly if this is pre-incarnate Christ, but hey, we're gonna go with Jesus because we're in church, right? So here's the vision. It's kind of wild. Let's walk through this. Daniel said, I looked up and saw a man dressed in linen clothing. 
with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body looked like a precious gem. His face flashed like lightning and his eyes flamed like torches. And many point that this might be a Christophany because in John's uh, revelation in chapter 19, it describes Christ in this same imagery. He goes on, his arms and feet shone like polished bronze and his voice roared like a vast multitude of people. When he spoke, it was just as if hundreds or thousands of people were speaking at the same time. He says, but only I, Daniel, saw this vision. The men with me saw nothing, but they were suddenly terrified and ran away to hide. So I was left there all alone to see this amazing vision. And what's interesting to me is that Daniel's the only one that saw this vision. Why did he alone see it. It's because we've learned through scripture and other times, there are times when God wants to communicate something to somebody that he doesn't communicate to somebody else. In fact, as a follower of Christ, you have probably, there's been a time where God showed you something really powerful. It might've been through just reading scripture. I mean, you've read this verse a dozen times, but all of a sudden it just pops out to you. And it's like, God spoke to me. And you, and you share that with a friend. Look at this verse. Look at what God's saying here. And they go, hmm, yeah, well, you want to go get some coffee? Because they don't see it. But God revealed something to you that he didn't reveal to somebody else. And maybe it's through a song, maybe a message. Maybe there was a moment with God and you're like, this is just the most amazing moment. And maybe that even happened to today. And, and you leaned over and said, wasn't that amazing? Some point in the in the service and you're like, what? You know, the squirrel joke was kind of corny, but what are you talking about? Amazing, right? And there are times where God's gonna reveal something to you that he's not gonna reveal to somebody else. And this is exactly what happened to Daniel. He alone experienced it. He's in the presence of Christ or this angelic being. And he says this, he says, my strength left me. My face grew deathly pale, I felt very weak. Then I heard the man speak, and when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted and lay there with my face to the ground. What's this all about? Listen, the strongest of men cannot bear the weight of the glory of God. And there might have been a moment that you've experienced before in your past where you felt the weight of that, the glory of God, and you've just felt weakened by that. Now, those times in my life have been very, very, very few, what I call these supernatural moments with God. Um, Probably everybody has had what I call uh, life altering moments or life changing moments. That's like changed your life because you experienced something and life just changed for you. And uh, I tried to think of some of these in my own life. And I thought about this time that I got my first steak served to me rare. And for 20 years, I did not know what steak tasted like because my dad grilled everything well done. Whether it was chicken, pork, or, or whatever, it all tasted like shoe leather because it, it all tasted the same. And for whatever reason, I ate this rare steak and life for me just changed. And now I eat my steaks medium rare. How many of you eat medium rare to rare steaks? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who eat medium well, repent today so you will know what a good steak tastes like. Uh, Another time life-altering moment for those of you who are married, uh, you probably remember the first time you saw your wife-to-be. I do. And it's like in the fifth or sixth grade, it's like girls are gross. Then a little older, it's like, hey, I got to get one of those. Life-altering moments when something like that happens. Uh, Those of you who have held a little baby in your arms, you know the life altering moment because that baby is so precious. Everybody has had a life altering moment at some point or another, but what I would put into the supernatural category, the supernatural moments, those have been very few and far between in my life. And I I think about one of the most dramatic for me was after I became a Christian, after age 20, uh, I went to a college career weekend And uh, a lot of people my age went, we were at a Christian camp and the speakers said, hey, what would you do for God if you knew you wouldn't fail? And in that moment, God spoke to me, not audibly, but I was so moved in my spirit. I had to excuse myself from the assembly. I had to go spend time alone. I arrived at that camp one person 
and I left somebody else and I'm doing what I'm doing today because I had that moment with God, that supernatural moment with God when God communicated something to me and it changed my life. And let me tell you today, some of you might have that moment today or this week or this month or this year, something that God has just for you and he's gonna speak to you. So what I wanna say today is I wanna look at how you can stand strong and firm in the faith when you've been praying for something like Daniel, but something's not happening. You don't see God working. How do you stand strong in the faith when you don't see God at work? So I wanna look at three things in this text for you to remember when it's time for you to stand strong in your faith. Number one, if you're taking notes, if you've never downloaded our app, if you're newer with us, our church app, download that so you can have access to the notes today and there's a discussion guide at the end. But the first thing you need to remember when you need to stand strong in faith and you need your faith strengthened, that God cares about you more than you do. Daniel had this experience with God and he fell before God. And the Bible goes on to say this, just then a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling to my hands and knees. Just then a hand touched me and lifted me. Now, if I could sing like some people could sing, there would be the sound of an organ to, to strike up and I would burst out in singing this classic hymn, which I'm not gonna do because some of you would not return, but it's the song, Love Lifted Me. And this is indeed what God did for Daniel. And here's the words of the song, if you don't know this hymn. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Maybe I'll break out in song, maybe not. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. And the refrain goes, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. And this is what happened to Daniel. And just let me tell you this, that God in this lifetime never extends his hand of judgment or condemnation. He always extends his hand to lift you up. And some of you today, God is gonna lift you up out of that despair like God lifted Daniel up in his despair. It goes on. And then the man said to me, Daniel, you are very precious to me. And somebody needs to hear that today, that you're very precious to God that God loves you, that God cares about you. The word precious means valuable, it means valuable. Precious means valuable. I love a lot of people, but that does not mean that they're all precious to me. My kids are precious to me. My wife is precious to me. Pastor Phil, I love him and honor him, but he's not precious to me. My workout partner at the gym, He's not precious to me. If he were, I would not be able to work out with him. It's, it's guy code. Like a guy, if, if you're at the gym, you can pat each other on the bottom all day long as, as long as the hand is flat. If it's cupped, you cannot do that any longer. I will not be your friend because that is guy code. You can't do that. And just how my children are precious to me, God looks at you with that same kind of love that you're valuable that you're precious to him. You're precious to God. He cares about you more than even you care about yourself at times. It goes on. So listen carefully to what I have to say, this Christ-like figure is saying. He says, stand up. Can somebody say, stand up? Stand up, for I have been sent to you. When he said this to me, what did you do? I stood up, still trembling. So God, God reached down and touched it and lifted Daniel up out of this pit that he was in so he could stand firm in the faith. So if your faith is wavering, if you need to be strengthened in your faith because you've been praying and you've not been seeing God at work, understand that God loves you more than you love yourself at times. He cares about you. Number two, if you're gonna stand firm in the faith, know that God is doing more than you understand, more than you can comprehend. Look at what happens next to Daniel. And then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the, get this, since the first day you began to pray for understanding, he's prayed for 21 days. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. Since the first time you prayed, 
God heard your prayer. For those of you who have been praying for something for a long time and you've not seen any answer to that, you might have that voice in the back of your mind going, why in the world are you praying? If God cared about you, if he existed, he would have answered that prayer already. But I want you to understand, since the first time that you prayed, God heard your prayer. Since the first time you prayed for healing for that person that you cared about, God heard your prayer. For the first time that you prayed for your child or begged God to change some circumstance, to work a miracle, God heard your prayer, the first time you prayed and cried out to God, our good God heard your prayer. And look at what this angelic being says to Daniel. I have come in answer to your prayer. Now I got to warn you, it gets a little sci-fi weird right here. I have come in answer to your prayer, but for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Now, how long had Daniel been praying? 21 days, right? And for 21 days, there's been something weird going on here. This kingdom, uh, this prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. And he goes on to say, then Michael, we, we've all heard of Michael the archangel, right? Michael the archangel came to work some supernatural mumbo jumbo. I'm editing that. He, one of the archangels came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I want to talk about this because this is kind of interesting. Uh, who is this prince of the kingdom of Persia. We all, we've all heard of Michael, the archangel. We've probably not all heard about who this prince is. Who is this prince? We're not exactly sure, but commentators largely agree that, that this is a demonic force. That before the creation of the world, there were these hosts of angels and, and some of them rebelled against God and they were kicked out of heaven. Their leader is Satan. So there are these demonic forces at work in the world today in the spiritual realm. Not everything that you see with your eye is what we see. There is this spirit world going on. We have a picture of this, a depiction. You can see the demonic spirit up above and all these angelic hosts, these beings fighting against that. There's this war going on. That's what we got to understand. Whatever conflict we ever have going on in our life, there is something going on behind the scenes that we cannot see because our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers of darkness in heavenly realms. That's what this battle is depicting. And for 21 days after Daniel prayed, there was this cosmic battle taking place. Now here's what's so powerful. Daniel was pay, pl praying this entire time, but what did he see? He saw nothing. He didn't see anything, but just because he didn't see anything, it doesn't mean that God wasn't doing anything. And listen, this is what should bring comfort to somebody because you've been praying for a long time and you've not been seeing God in response to that prayer. But just because you're not seeing anything doesn't mean that our good God is not doing something behind the scenes. The first time that you cried out, be assured of this, that he heard your cry. And there are beings, angelic beings, that's fighting this battle to win this war and you cannot see it. So you keep praying, you keep believing, and even if you're not seeing anything, you have no idea what kind of battle that's going on. Listen, the kingdom of light is always victorious over the kingdom of darkness. And we gotta understand that today for 21 days. Daniel saw nothing. There's this battle raging because heaven heard his cry the first time he prayed. Now, I was trying to think of some way to illustrate this practically. Um, and, and I thought uh, of something that happened to me one time that's never happened again. And I've shared about how I didn't grow up as a, a Christian. I became a Christian at age 20. Before that, I lived the party life. I mean, everything reflected that. So I became a Christian. And, and just immediately before that, I did some things that I wasn't proud of. One of them was I invited my 15-year-old cousin, Lonnie, to go to his first ACDC concert. 15 years old. Not only did I take him to a concert, but I introduced him to some other things that evening that I should have never done. Well, I became a Christian and I, re I regretted so much of those things. And I had this burden for my cousin Lonnie. And I'm like, I pray God 
help me to share my faith in Jesus with Lonnie. Help him to respond because I was just naive enough to believe that God could answer all of my prayers. And I prayed that prayer. And um, I was going to go in a few days from then to, uh, to my folks house. It was an over an hour drive, hour and 15 minute drive. And, and Lonnie learned he liked going to the farm. He's like, can I go with you? And I'm like, yes, God. Yes. I said, sure you can, Lonnie. So I invited him. I drove that trip, Lonnie and I, in a 1969 Impala, jacked up, fancy rims, but all it had was an eight track tape player in the deck. For those of you who don't know what eight track is, look it up on the internets. Uh, but, but I started listening, I got rid of all my eight tracks. I started listening to, to Christian cassette tapes. And some of you might not know what a cassette is either, but I had this big boom box in the front seat that I picked up Lonnie, I was playing my Christian rock music because I was going to share the love of Jesus with Lonnie because I was repentant in that. And we're going down the road. Now, Lonnie, at age 15, and I'm not exaggerating, he was an accomplished guitar player. This guy could play. He went on to, to, to play in bands. He, he, he died at 41 of cancer, but he could play anything. And I mean, he was just exceptional, even at age 15. And he'd always wanted to share his new song with me. He's like, can I play my new song? He like had his packet of cassettes. I said, sure he can, Lonnie. So he takes out my Christian tape, he puts in his tape. It wouldn't play. He took it out, he put my tape back in, perplexed. It played. He took it out, he put another tape in. I'm watching all this happen, you know, cause it's like, what's going on? He puts another tape in of his, it doesn't play. He puts in a different rock, Christian rock tape of mine and it plays. And I looked at Lonnie dead serious. I said, Lonnie, I think God wants you to hear Christian music today. On the outside, I was calm, cool, and collected. On the inside, I'm freaking out going, how are you doing that, God? I'm like, is there some cosmic battle going on inside my boom box where these demons and angels are fighting? Well, I got to share Christ with Lonnie and he accepted Christ and was baptized into Christ. It floored me. Nothing ever else happened. And I strongly, I firmly believe that somehow God was working in that boom box, working this cosmic battle just so I could share and confirm the love of God with Lonnie. Awesome, incredible time. I don't know how this might apply to you. I don't even know if you have a cassette player or not. But I want to tell you that even though you don't see God working, God is working behind the scenes, fighting a cosmic battle because our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities in this dark world. How do you stand strong in the faith? Remember, God cares about you even more than you do at times. And know that God is working behind the scenes. From the first time that you cried out in ways that you don't even understand, God heard your prayer and he's working and he's involved in your life. And point number three, understand this, that God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. And that's exactly a, a, a New Testament verse that the Bible writer actually says, God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. And, and we read, this is what happens next in the life of Daniel. Now, let me tell you, uh, two weeks ago, I had gotten like a stomach bug and, uh, so I took a whole week off at the gym. And you, anybody knows if you're a gym rat, you take a week off, you go back that next week, you feel weak, right? You know what I'm talking about. So last Monday, I, I come back to the gym. Well, my, my regular workout partner actually took off a week that week to go like to the lake every evening. You know, so I worked out with a different guy on Monday. It was chest day because every Monday's chest day at the gym where I go. And, and I was working out with a guy I was working out with and he had, uh, he, we, he ended up stacking way too much weight on there. And I'm like, you know, I'm just coming back after a week of feeling bad. I don't know if I can lift that. And he said, go for it. He says, you got this. And I'm like, all right. So I laid down knowing I shouldn't do it, but I pushed those first two up. I mean, it was strong. And I thought I'll go with one more. And when I did, I, I saw his hand slip under that bar because he knew I was in a struggle. And I'm, he's like, it's all you, it's all you. And he does it. And I'm like, he says, go for another one. I drop that and I'm like, there's no way. And it just ripped right up on that fourth one. He's like, it's all you. I knew it wasn't me. I knew it wasn't me. 
And here's my point. I didn't know, when you get to the end of your strength and you gotta rely on somebody else's strength, the same is true with our Heavenly Father. You will not understand His strength in your life until you recognize your weakness. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. And until you brace, embrace your weakness, you'll never fully understand his strength. So Daniel says this to this Christ-like figure or this angelic being, how can someone like me, your servant, talk to you, my Lord? My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. Some of you right now, this is you. My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. I can't breathe. I don't know what my marriage will hold. I don't know how my relationship will work out with my child. I've been fighting for this financially. I don't think we can survive. My strength is gone. I can hardly breathe, Daniel says. Then one, he says, then the one who looked like a man, look at this, touched me again, touched me again, lifted me up, and I felt my strength returning. So don't miss this. Some of you, this is all you need. There is a God moment in your life where God's gonna touch you and everything's gonna change. He's gonna touch you and you're gonna return to Christ. You're gonna, he's gonna touch you again and he's gonna give you the strength to stand. He's gonna touch you. And for that, something that you stopped believing in a long time ago, he's gonna give you a refreshed, renewed faith to believe in for your future. One touch is gonna keep you going. One touch and your strength is returning. One touch from the presence of Christ and everything changes. He touched me again and I felt my strength returning. Don't be afraid, he said, for he reaffirms this. You're very precious to God. Peace, be encouraged, be strong, and you can stand strengthened in your faith today because you can know that you are precious in the sight of God. And from the first time that you cried out to him for that burden, maybe long, long time ago, he heard your prayer and he answers your prayer. Even though you don't see him, I want you to know that there's a cosmic battle being fought on your behalf and he's gonna touch you. And in your weakness, you're gonna find that his strength is all that you need because love lifted me. People are going to ask you, how are you standing after all that you've been through? And you're going to stand courageous in your faith and you're going to say, because I have a God who loves me like a child and he is working on my behalf. He's working out things to the good, even though they seem horrible right now. He's working them out to the good for those who are called according to his purpose, called according to those who love him. And I'm standing right now. I might not understand anything and I might not see God at work in everything that I do, but I want you to know this. He touched me and lifted me and he made me whole. He made me whole. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for looking at this vision that Daniel shared, that you gave to Daniel. Father, that we can just apply this in our own life in so many ways, that, that we see how in, in Daniel's despair, he came to you like he always did, faithful in prayer, and that he struggled for days and days, he struggled, but you gave him this vision and touched him. And Father, I pray there's those here today that that need your touch, that they've struggled and struggled, they've struggled, and Father, they've been waiting for answers. I pray today that we'd all be confident that, to know that you're working behind the scenes and you're gonna make it good one day. Father, give us that hope, we thank you for that. I pray for those hearing my voice, oh God, that's never said to Jesus, you're the way, the truth, and the life, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I pray for that person today that they would understand that it's not just a Christophany, but that Christ did, he was born in Bethlehem and he died a, a horrific death for a very specific purpose because I was drowning deep in sin, but love lifted me, you lifted me. I pray for that person who needs hope in this life and hope eternal, that they would cry out to Jesus, that they would place their faith in Jesus and just like I did so many years ago and like Lonnie, submit to you in baptism and you just make everything new. I pray for that person today. Give them hope.
give us hope because you love us so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's go and stand together one last time. You know, God is faithful, and there's reason uh, to have joy this morning. So let's just sing about the joy of the Lord today that's in the house. Here we go. Blessed week. We'll see you back here next time.